uh, the six and eight vertex models in counting perfect matching will be presented by Pin Yandu. Uh, yeah. By me, Taylor. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> How? Which one? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, thank you so much for uh, this opportunity to uh, talk about my uh, work. I'm uh, a fifth year PhD at the University of Wisconsin, uh, advised by Professor Jin Yi Tai, who's sitting here. So, uh, in this talk, I will uh, briefly talk about our work on the six and eight vertex models and counting perfect matchings. Uh, this is a joint work with my advisor and Pian Lu, who is also sitting here, and uh, Jing Yu. So, before I start, I want to mention uh, that uh, the main technique we use here is to give the fast approximation scheme is still my MCMC, which is mentioned in, uh, 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 by the last talk. Uh, by Piyush. Uh, as far as I know, there is no result on the zeros of the polynomial partition function so far, uh, but this is a problem that uh, some of you uh, have looked at like years ago, uh, it, it, uh, at least for the unweighted case, so it might be still interesting for you to uh, look at this model with me. So let's get started. Um, so first about the six vertex model. Uh, this model was introduced by Linus Pauling in 1935 to describe the property of water ice. Um, in water ice, each oxygen has four nearest neighbors with OHO bound, and each hydrogen is in two possible positions. It's either closer to one oxygen or another. And each oxygen must be surrounded by two hydrogens near to it and two on the far side. This is called the ice condition. And Professor Eli Lieb is sitting here. Uh, thank you. Uh, Professor Eli Lieb considers square ice, which is a two-dimensional version of real ice. And it's defined by the same ice condition, but applied to the square lattice. So here is a state, valid state in the six vertex model. And you can see that for each, vert, uh, each <coughs> red vertex as a oxygen here, there are two hydrogen near to it and two on the far side. And one very important discovery in statistical mechanics is the following. If we denote the number of uh, uh, oxygens by n and the z to be the partition function, which is also the number of uh, valid configuration in this model, uh, then this exact solution, which is defined to be the partition fu function per vertex as the number of oxygens goes to infinity, is equal to 4 over 3 to the 3 over 2. This is called the leap square i's constant. So some of you may have noticed that if we model these oxygens as a vertex and uh, these hydrogens as arrows, if it's close to one oxygen, then we model it as an arrow going in. If we is far from one vertex here, we model it as uh, an arrow going out. Then uh, the states are just the Eulerian orientations on four regular graphs. So there are six permitted type of local <coughs> configuration around the vertex because of four choose two of edges are going in. Uh, so there are six possible weights, W1 to W6. And it's, it is often assumed in physics that uh, if we reverse every arrow around the vertex uh, and get another configuration, these configurations should have the same weight. This is called arrow reversal symmetry. So in the, this case, we study this model uh, when W1 equal to W2 equal to A, and these two states have weight B and these two states have weight C. So the partition function is defined to be the weighted sum of all valid Eulerian orientations. For each Eulerian orientation, its weight is defined to be the product on the vertices. So in addition to water ice with ABC being 111, several other crystals with hydrogen bonds also satisfy the model. Uh, for example, the KDP model where A is equal to B uh, larger than C, or the Ries F model where A is equal to B less than C. And exact solutions for these models and some other generalized models have been obtained as well uh, in the sense of thermodynamic limit in physics. So uh, in, computer science we stu in computer science, we studied the complexity of computing the partition function. Uh, the exact computational complexity has been studied a lot uh, for the unweighted version where we compute the number of Eulerian orientations, it is Sharpie complete even on planar for regular graphs. 
And recently, there are some work on the six word text model partition function under complex weights. The first is by Cai, Fu, and Xia, who proved a complexity dichotomy for general Fourier gra graphs. And another work is by Cai, Fu, and Xiao, who proved the complexity trichotomy for the planar Fourier gra graphs. In both two works, cancellation plays an important role for polynomial time co computable cases. What is a com trichotomy? Complexity trichotomy? I will talk uh, in, a, in a second. So under our study with uh, error reversal symmetry and ABC being non-negative, uh, the, the, the criteria is explicit as follows. Uh, only on these two cases, the problem is tractable for uh, planar and non-planar graphs. Uh, on these two cases, the problem is tractable only on planar graphs, but not on general graphs. And for all other parameter settings, the problem is sharply hard. So this is called the trichotomy. Uh, without this planar tractability, uh, this is called the dichotomy for general graphs. So as you can see, except for very um, limited cases, the problem are sharply hard e everywhere. So that's why we want to study the approximate comp computational complexity for computer partition function. We studied mainly for a general for regular graphs. It's simply, just to understand the terminology, you call the exact thermodynamic limit and tractable uh, computation of partition function for finite graph, right? Yeah. So uh, here are some of the previous results on approximate counting and sampling. Uh, so Michael Winkler in 1992 gave an FPRS for a number of Eulerian orientations on general Eulerian graphs. Uh, Luby, Randall, and Sinclair proved rapid mixing of a Markov chain that leads to a faster sampling scheme for Eulerian orientations on rectangular regions of the square lattice with fixed boundaries. Randall Tatali improved the result to rapid mixing of the single side global dynamics, still with fixed boundaries. And Gober, Martin, and Patterson pr improved the previous result, previous result to the uh, rapid mixing on free boundary conditions. Uh, but you know that all these result, previous results are on the points A, B, C being 1, 1, 1 in the parameter space. And we give the result that first time uh, go beyond the unweighted case, and our result, interesting, or uh, interesting, conform to the phase transition phenomenon in physics. So let me uh, briefly introduce the phenomenon of phase transition for the six-word text model be before I go to describe our result. Uh, the transition, phase transition was described by Ronnie Buxner in his famous book. Uh, on the square lattice, the weight ABC determine the relative probabilities of states and thus can influence the macroscopic behavior of the system. So I, won't, I will only give a brief introduction for those who are interested. Please re, uh, check this book. So the phase transition is saying when on the square lattice region with its side length approaching infinity, this is called in the thermodynamic limit in uh, statistical physics, uh, when A is larger than B plus C, the whole system tends to be frozen in one of the two states, where in this state, every vertex look like, looks like configuration one. And in another state, every vertex look like configuration two. And these are the two states uh, that has the highest possible weights. And we say it's in the ferroelectric phase because everything look uh, the same. Uh, and in short, we write Fe. And when B, is larger than A plus C, we say uh, it's also in the ferroelectric phase and it's symmetric, symmetric to the above case where it tends to be frozen <laughs> into two states where everybody looks like this or everyone looks like this. Okay. And when C is larger than A plus B, um, we, we call these two type states saddle configurations, the configuration five and conf configuration six. Uh, the system tends to be frozen into two states where Saddle configurations alternate. And in this case, we call it in the anti ferroelectric phase because everything alternates. And when no one is dominating another two in ABC, we say um, the system is in a disorder phase because no one single state dominates. 
Okay, so the this is the phase transition diagram plotted here, uh, where we make C normalized to one, and when C is equal to zero, it's at the infinite far away, which we didn't plot in this diagram. And our result says uh, there is an FPRS fast approximation scheme for the partition function. If we're in the blue region, where a square is less than or equal to b square plus c square, b square is less than or equal to a square plus c square, and c square is less than or equal to a square plus b square. This is inside the disordered phase. Uh, for the white region, uh, it is still open. And there is no FPRS not for parameter settings not in the disorder the phase, which in the ferroelectric phase and anti-ferroelectric phase. So, sorry, but so what is the uh, planar for regular graph or what? Uh, this is for general for regular graphs. But for general for regular graph, how do you mean this A, B, C? I don't see for general for uh, that's, regular graph. That's for, for any uh, particular labeling. You can choose the labeling A, B, C for the six you can label uh, edge one, two, three, four uh, in a way that you like. I see. Okay. <coughs> so before I move on, dash. yeah, sure. Hmm? Last slide. <coughs> I missed that. Missed. The dash curve. Oh, the dash curve. Oh, sorry. So um, this this is an interesting curve. This uh, corresponds to c square equal equal to a a square plus b square, which is uh, in. Uh, Exact computational, uh, exact computational complexity is tractable by the Fafian, FKT algorithm. Uh, so let me give a proof sketch for the, yes. Well, this last command, is it only along this line that you can map it to a perfect matching problem? Yes. Only there. So there is no map to perfect matching. This can be matching. can be mapped to perfect matching only on planar graphs. So it, it sorry, it is uh, intractable only on planar graphs. Because the FKT uh, algorithm only work for planar graphs. So let's move on. So I've tried to give a proof sketch of the faster al approximation algorithm result. Uh, so we, as I said, we use counting via sampling, the Markov chain Monte Carlo technique. Um, the algorithm, specific algorithm we use that is called the direct loop algorithm, where the state space are Eulerian orientations and near Eulerian orientations. Uh, an, an orientation on the edges is called near Eulerian if uh, still every vertex satisfies the two in, two out ice condition, but there are exactly two edges if we, if we view a single edge as two half edges, these two half edges disagree. So we allow near Eulerian orientations like this. And the transition of this Markov chain is metropolis moves between neighboring states. One state is neighbor to another state if it's creating, shifting, or merging of two defects on the edges. For example, from the state one to state two, it creates two defects around this vertex. From the second state to the third state, it <coughs> shifts this red defect from this edge to uh, another edge incident to the same vertex. And from this state to this state, it merges these two defects. So this marker chain was actually used a lot in the, in the literature, especially by uh, statistical mechanics, um, mainly for studying the numerical properties of the six vertex model. And one interesting fact about this Markov chain is that it depicts the like, natural defects happening in the real eyes. So here comes this technical lemma. So in order to prove uh, an FPRAS, we have to prove the rapid mixing of a Markov chain. Um, so let me use this Z sub zero to denote the total weight of Eulerian orientation, which, which is also the partition function we're interested in to compute, and z sub 2 to be the total weight of near Eulerian orientation. Then the technical lemma says, if z2 over z0 is polynomially upper bounded, then the Markov chain is rapid mixing in the blue region. So this doesn't give the rapid mixing, but gives a condition when if we can prove this z2 over z0 is bounded, we have the rapid mixing. 
this lemma uh, was proved by canonical path argument in our paper. Uh, it can also be derived by techniques of McQuillan uh, in the framework of uh, windability. And we show that Z0, Z2 over Z0 is indeed polynomial upper bounded in the whole disordered phase, not just the blue region. So this will give you a, a FPRS for the blue region, but we prove something uh, more here. And the following structure lemma plays a crucial role. Before stating the lemma, let me introduce the notion of a four reconstruction. It is a four regular graph having four external edges. So inside there are vertices, edges, where, where I didn't draw them. And this four reconstruction defines a constraint function. Uh, the value, <coughs> the value uh, on the input on the four external edges uh, is the weighted sum of va all valid internal configurations con consistent with the input. So this is a gadget uh, that defines, it turns out that the constraint function of this four reconstruction also satisfies the ice rule and the arrow reversal symmetry if everything inside is satisfied. So this gadget can be viewed as a virtual vertex <coughs> in the six vertex model for some a prime, b prime, c prime that we don't know if, unless we um, compute them. And our structural lemma says the set of four reconstraint functions lying in the disordered phase is closed under four reconstructions. It means that if you start with vertices in the disordered phase, what you get as a constraint function of the four reconstruction is still in the disordered phase. And this lemma is important not only for its crucial role in giving the FPRS, but also reveals the structural difference between the two sides of the phase transition threshold. So let's see how can we prove this structural lemma. Um, we use the idea of decomposition of Eulerian orientations. For each Eulerian orientation, we decompose the orientation at each vertex in the following way. <coughs> we pair incoming edge, edges to outgoing edges in two possible ways. And this will give us, uh, for each Eulerian orientation, can give us two to the number of vertices many circuit partitions. Okay. So I explicitly show the way of decomposition here. Um, so this is the indicator. It, if it's one, it means uh, there is a decomposition into this pairing for this configuration. And you can check um, this is uh, indeed correct. So. The idea of decomposition also works for four reconstructions. For if you look at this gadget, um, suppose we have an orientation for this gadget where uh, it goes in from E1 and E4 and goes out at e E2 and E3. Uh, if we decompose every vertex inside, it's possible that we get a, a circuit and trail decomposition where finally E1 goes to E2 and E4 goes to E3. It's also possible that E1 goes to E3, e, E4 goes to E2. It depends on the internal structure. It depends on the way you decompose. So in, if it's like this, we say E1 and E2 are globally paired together for this four reconstruction. And we can put weights on the local pairings at vertices. <coughs> and define the weight of a circuit in composition to be the product on weights on vertices. And we can define the induced weight capital W of global pairings for the four reconstruction at the virtual vertex. For example, we can de define the capital W of this kind of pairing to be the weighted sum of all circuit decompositions where E1 and <coughs> E2 are paired up, E3 and E4 are paired up. So if we make the previous idea of decomposition into a weighted one and solve this linear equation, set of equations, then we get the following. The constraint function ABC is in the disorder phase at every vertex if and only if the weights of pairings are all non-negative at every vertex locally. And this indicates the weight of circuit partitions of the Fourier construction are non-negative because the weights are just a product on each vertex. 
So the induced weight function, capital W, for the global pairings of the Fourier construction are, are also non-negative. And this is if and only if construct functions of the Fourier construction, A prime, B prime, C prime, is in the disordered phase. So this proves the closure property as uh, the structural lemma. Any questions before I move on? So I will skip the proof sketch for the hardness part, uh, but I want to mention that we use uh, an approximation, a preserving reduction. Yes? Sorry. So the previous slide I stated where even when the ratio is polynomially bounded, the near uh, or here, that's still not sufficient to prove. Not sufficient. Uh, yeah, so the, it has to be combined with uh, the technical lemma here. So our technical says if it's polynomial bounded, then it's rapid mixing. And this does not give FPRS. We need to do more, but uh, it's the key point here. Okay. So for the hardness part, I won't give the proof, but we uh, use an approximation preserving reduction from the maximum independent set on three regular grams. So let's move on to the, the eight vertex model. Uh, this time we have uh, two more local configurations, which are the sinks and sources. <coughs> so we still insist the error reversal symmetry and give them the same weight D. And the six vertex model is just a special case when D is equal to zero. And the states this time are not Eulerian orientation anymore. They are even orientations. For each even orientation, uh, each, every vertex should be in one of the eight states, local configuration here. And we again, we can similarly define the partition function. So we still have the phase transition phenomenon from physics. Uh, we have one more antiferroelectric phase when D is larger than A plus B plus C, the system tends to be frozen into exactly one of two states uh, where sinks and sources alternate. And for the disorder phase, we have uh, one more uh, inequalities here. So uh, let me plot our result in uh, this kind of uh, diagram. We, we uh, because we're in a four-dimensional space this time, so it's very hard to plot exactly where they are, so I use this Vine diagram. diagram. Um, first the result is uh, we, we still have the NP hardness of approximation, the partition function in the ferroelectric phase and the antiferroelectric phase. And this is by uh, an approximation preserving reduction from the maximum cut on three regular graphs. Uh, and I will keep on filling in details in the disordered phase. So please allow me to use this square sum um, to denote the re region where among the four squares, one square is less than or equal to the other three. And remark here, this region is a sub-region of the disordered phase. And here's one of our results. We can still show that a variation of the direct loop algorithm for the six over tax model still have the rapid mixing uh, property if Z2 over Z0 is polynomially upper bounded. This is using uh, an, a similar um, con canonical path argument. Please allow me to use this D sum to denote the, this region where A plus D is less than or equal to B plus C, B plus D less than or equal to A plus C, C plus D less than or equal to A plus B. This is again another region that's inside the disordered phase. And we show that in the D sum region, we can indeed polynomially upper bounded this Z2 over Z0. So in the intersection, we have an FPRS. But this time, in order to prove uh, this property uh, for this region, we, we have to, we use the decomposition of even orientation, but the orient decomposition is uh, different from the one we use for the six vertex model. This time we decompose for an even orientation, we decompose uh, 
each the edges around each vertex in all three possible ways. Because we have a sink or source at uh, locally at uh, a vertex, so it's not possible to always pair incoming edges with outgoing edges. But uh, when we do this pairing, we, we, we give them a sign. Uh, so if we are pairing incoming edges with incoming edges, for example, in this pairing for this configuration, uh, we give them a ma minus sign to indicate that uh, you have conflicting orientations here. So we do not only have three kind of pairings for each vertex, we have actually six. It's either each one of them with either a plus sign or a minus sign. So we have six possible ways of decompose. And you can see that for sink and, sinks and sources, um, every possible decomposition pairs incoming edges with incoming edges, outgoing edges with outgoing edges. So they always have minus signs here. So in order to convince you, uh, I will give you an example of a <coughs> decomposition of a two vertex four edges graph. Uh, if it's of this, um, even orientation, then because at each vertex there are three ways to decompose it, uh, so in total there are nine ways to decompose this, this uh, single even orientation. Notice that for, uh, for example, notice this specific decomposition where this has a plus sign, this also has a plus sign. It also appears in the decompositions of another even orientation, which also has nine possible ways to decompose, but they share only this decomposition because of the rules we specify here. Okay. Uh, so first closure property for the eighth vertex model. The set of four reconstruction <coughs> functions, excuse me, lying in the disorder phase is closed under four reconstructions. This again reveals a structure difference, a structural difference between the two sides of the phase transition threshold. Uh, the proof idea is the following. Under the weighted version <coughs> of the decomposition, we solve this set of equations and get the following. If A, B, C, D is in the disordered phase, it's, it's if, only and if and only if uh, there exists a non-negative weight function on the pairings. And this indicates the induced weight function, capital W of pairings for the four reconstruction as a virtual vertex are also non-negative. And so the constraint function for the four reconstruction is also lying in the disordered phase. So this is kind of similar to the proof we give for the six vertex model in the disordered phase. Another uh, lemma uh, says, the set of four reconstruction functions lying in the D sum region is close under four reconstructions. And this closure property directly indicates that Z2 over Z0 is polynomially upper bounded. And the proof is the following. Still under the same weighted decomposition here. A, B, C, D is the D sum region if and only if for each type of pairing without sign the weight of this pairing with a plus sign is no less than the weight of the same pairing with a minus sign. This is by directly uh, solve this on, in this D sum region. And we managed to prove this non-trivial statement that the induced weight function capital W also for the global pairing also has this property. So the construction function for the four reconstruction is also in the D sum region. So yeah, now we really have a, an FPRS in the intersection of the two regions shown here. Uh, we still want to understand uh, what are the computational complexity for approximating partition functions for the <coughs> parts that uh, we don't have algorithm, we didn't prove hardness yet. And we're able to uh, link the complexity of approximating the partition function for the eighth vertex model outside the D sum region to the problem of approximately counting perfect matchings on general graphs. So we, our result is uh, outside the D sum region, the problem of uh, co computing the partition function of the eighth vertex model is at least as hard as a problem approximately computing the perfect matching 
under approximation preserving reductions. Again, I'm not going to show the proof here, um, but what I'm going to show is the following. Uh, so we know that outside of this region, it is sharp PM hard, uh, and we want to ask when it's sharp PM easy. And we show that inside the square sum region, the problem is indeed sharp PM easy. We show this by giving the approximation preserving reduction from the problem to approximate the number of uh, weighted perfect matchings. So in order to prove uh, this theorem, uh, we use the notion of a Fourier match gates. It is a graph with k external edges. Uh, external edges are labeled i sub 1 to i sub k. And each non-external edge E has a non-negative weight W sub E. This defines a function, a constraint function F on the k external edges, where F on a specific input is the weighted sum over all the perfect matchings that are consistent with the external uh, input on the external edges. So in order to show sharp PM easiness, we show that every eight vertex constraint function represented by an ABCD inside this square sum region can be implemented by a Fourier match, match gate. Uh, so the Fourier match gate we use is just a, a complete six, complete graph on six vertices with four external edges. And we, we can put the non-negative weights on uh, each between the, on the edge between each two vertex uh, ij awaits w sub ij. And these are the functions, constraint functions that we can express. Uh, so for the eight vertex model, these eight values are exactly uh, corresponds to the weights on the eight configurations. We have to show that uh, we can set the non-negative value w sub one two and so on and so forth. Uh, by setting these non-negative values on the edges, we can get every point in the square sum region. And it, it reduces this to the following geometric lemma. Um, so if we let u to be a polyhedron given by these inequalities, v to be a bounded face, x plus y plus z is equal to 1 with um, x, y, z being non-negative and W be another polyhedron. Then the lemma says U, the polyhedron U is the Minkowski sum of <coughs> V and W. Namely, U consists of precisely those points vector U such that vector U is equal to vector V plus vector W for some vector V in capital V and vector W in capital W. And the proof we use is also a geometric one. So, uh, the red triangle in this three-dimensional space are the boundaries for this V. The blue rays are the intersections of the facets for the polyhedron W. And the green rays together with this red triangle are the intersections of the seven facets of the polyhedron U. So in order to show this lemma, we have to prove that by moving, by shifting this blue polyhedron on the surface of this red triangle, we can reach every point inside this green polyhedron and nothing else. And we prove this by the following. We first put this vertex of this blue polyhedron on one vertex of the red triangle and shift it along the three edges of this right triangle and this will cover every point for the polyhedron U, except for the tetrahedron, the, the red tetrahedron here. And in order to fill everything in this tetrahedron, we just use a vector that's perpendicular, a vector in the blue region that's perpendicular to this red triangle, and swipe the face, the surface of this <coughs> red triangle. And this finished the proof. So 
uh, combining the sharp PM easiness and hardness result, we know this region in the square sum region, but outside the D sum region, the problem is equivalent to counting perfect matchings uh, in an approximation sense. So our result is actually tight uh, because no ABCD outside this square sum region can be implemented by a Fourier match gate. This is essentially due to both of Goldberg, uh, Jim, Rich, and Zivny. And in fact, we have a theorem of independent interest. Uh, it is open for several years. What are the constraint functions that can be implemented by non-negatively weighted K rematch gate for K larger than three? <coughs> and we, gave, we give the characterization for four rematch gates. Um, they are essentially those satisfying this kind of condition. I'm being a little vague on describing the constraint functions, but uh, one can check our paper for details for the statement of the theorem. Uh, so last but not least, uh, we actually also have a result, an FPRAS on planar graphs that's inside the D sort of phase, but outside the D sum region. So on general graphs, it's proved, we prove it's a, a number PM hard to approximate this problem for, for general graphs. But we show for planograms, uh, we do have FPRS result. And for problems inside this little square, uh, these are the first problems that uh, we know, as far as uh, we know, that has this property. Uh, and for open problems, uh, the approximation of the partition function here is an open problem. We show that z2 over z0 is uh, polynomial bounded, uh, but is there an FPRS for this region? Also, the other open problem is uh, we show for the disorder phase outside <coughs> of this box is counting PM hard, but uh, as I said, it's not possible to use a match gate to show PM equivalence in this region. Uh, so we would like to ask if it's PM equivalent or if it's even harder or if it's in between. Yeah. So thank you. Net naive question. Uh, <clears throat> where does the effective boundary conditions come in? I mean, this, these models are very sensitive to the boundary. Yes, yes, yes. So. Uh, so uh, so the work I present here is for general four regular graphs, which uh, is not restricted to f uh, square lattice, or it actually square lattice with different kind of boundary conditions, except for the uh, torus, except for the torus, they are not f uh, four regular graphs in the graph theory. Oh. But uh, we also have some results on the square lattice, but that's another story. Well, square, square or cubic, it's the same problem. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Two dimensions or three dimensions. Yes, yes. But uh, uh, we, we ask, for a four regular graph, we ask it has no like, uh, external edges, no open boundaries. For this, our result, uh, the approximation uh, result, uh, the FPRS result works for the torus, of course, because it's a four regular graph in the graph theoretical sense. But uh, the hardness doesn't quite work because in, hard, in the proof of the hardness, uh, we use a lot of constructions that's highly non-square lattice-like. I have some results I can talk to you after this talk for the square lattice. If I may ask another one, but if somebody else wants. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, namely, um, it, the, the Boundary condition that would give you the maximum number of possibilities is just free boundaries where things go out. You can't do any better than that. But it took many years uh, to prove, I didn't do it, that, that in fact the periodic boundary conditions gave you the same entropy. Yes, yes. yes. I, I know that result, yes. That's, and uh, that, I don't know if it's true in three dimensions. It was proved in two. Uh, you know, we're talking about four regular graphs, so if it's in three-dimensional, uh, it has like more than four edges. Oh, you're, you're restricting to four? Four, yes. Okay. 
So and we have a, this called the six or a text model, right? So six is because four <coughs> plus two is six. Can I make another remark about this F model? The one, I forgot, the, the yeah, one we... The RIS-F model. Yeah, yeah the anti electric model, which... <clears throat> um, this has a very interesting it, it, uh, feature, namely, uh, it has phase transitions, as you know, as you learn the parameters. And uh, what is remarkable, has several remarkable features, but one is that... Uh, if you go off the real axis, as you know at the parameter, namely the electric field or whatever, become complex, then of course you, you end up with analytic functions for a while and so on. And then there's a boundary. In the case of the easy model, the boundary is when you hit the unit circle. That's what we really angry. But in almost, as far as I know, all cases, this analytic continuation across the boundary to, I mean, the two sheets that cross at the boundary. So for the easy model, that's the case. You can analytically continue, uh, at least some of the things. But in this case, you you end up with a boundary in the, for the F model where there's no analytic continuation anywhere possible on the boundary. Uh, I forgot what this is called. The distinguished boundary. No, it's not. <coughs> I, for, I forgot what okay. it's called. Thank anyway. you. It, you, there's no analytic continuation possible. But it might be different when there are external fields, right? You know, I'm talking as a function of the field. Oh, okay. Things, things change. And Thanks.